Hello, everyone. My guest today is Adam Driscoll. He's a solo founder, Microsoft MVP, and longer time open source contributor. His software is used by hundreds of thousands of people worldwide. When he's not working, he's an outdoor enthusiast, long distance endur- endurance athlete, and beer lover. Adam, you ready to take us to a top? Yeah, definitely. You an IPA kind of guy or what? Oh, definitely. Big <laughs> IPA guy. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Very cool. And you do that before or after the Ironman run? Uh, definitely after. Uh, fair uh, enough. I've tried the before. It doesn't work out so well. I hear. I hear that doesn't work so well. All right. Yeah. So so what are you working on? Ironmansoftware.com. What's the technology do? Sure. So uh, we kind of have two different products. Our, um, our two products are PowerShell Universal, which is a platform for building web-based IT tools. So the idea there is that people that kind of know PowerShell and kind of want to like integrate with other technology um, in their environment, they can use PowerShell Universal to build websites and APIs and automations on top of uh, their PowerShell scripts. So um, that's cool because a lot of you know DevOps IT guys don't really have the chops necessarily to build a website or build up an API like that, but this kind of gives them the ability to do so. Um, and then our other product is PowerShell Pro Tools. That's kind of been along, around for a long time. Um, and that is a bunch of different uh, tools that we have for PowerShell to kind of build or like on-prem or desktop tools using uh, PowerShell scripts. And, and for those of us that are not technical, what is, help us understand what PowerShell is. Give us an analogy. Sure. So PowerShell is a scripting language um, that Microsoft developed, and it pretty much is used for integrating with uh, both Microsoft's on-prem Windows systems uh, as well as like their Azure technology. And they've kind of brought it into the uh, cross-platform world now, so you can manage Linux and that kind of thing. So, so Harvard uses you. How does Harvard use you? So uh, Harvard is building pr- primarily uh, like uh, universal dashboard websites with PowerShell. So uh, they're using it to manage their IT systems inside uh Pretty much their like backend stuff, so managing Active Directory and that kind of thing, um, to allow their users who don't know how to run PowerShell scripts to like unlock user accounts or reset passwords, that kind of thing. So it's more sort of internal admin. And a Harvard student's never going to go to like the Scholar.com website and see sort of like in their course builder, your tool is powering the course builder at Harvard. It's more like backend admin stuff. Yep, exactly. So primarily people are building like tools to yeah administer stuff inside environments. So. Interesting. Okay. And help me understand pricing here. Is this a pure play SaaS business or mix? Uh, it's actually mostly on-prem right now. So uh, we our technology is kind of built in terms of, in, in a way that we could make it a SaaS business. So uh, we, we aren't doing that right now, but uh, primarily people are installing this on their, uh, you know, internal uh, environments and then uh, we're licensing that based on uh, like kind of the per server licensing model. So okay, and on average, sort of obviously you have to calculate how many servers per customer. But on average, what's a customer paying you uh, per year or per month to use this? Uh, so primarily, I'd say on average, customers are paying us around four hundred dollars a year. Um, our larger customers are paying you know anywhere from. Uh, two thousand dollars a year to um, some of them are upwards of six thousand dollars a year. So it just kind of depends on how many servers they're rolling out. So if I'm paying you four hundred bucks a year, how many servers do I probably have with you? Oh, uh, that's just one server. So. One server, got it. Yeah. Interesting. So, but you kind of okay. get all the features, all the features of the product um, uh, at that price point. So. And is there literally like you obviously don't you don't sell the hardware, do you? No, no hardware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so if yeah. I had one of these servers in a cool little room in my home office here with air conditioning and blue lights in the background and fans and spinners and cables, uh, if I had that installed, I could essentially buy your software, 400 bucks a year, install it on my on-prem server for security purposes, and then run these integrations you talk about on the back end. Yep, exactly. Interesting. When did you launch the company? What year? Uh, started fall of 2017. So um, we were actually, I actually released the PowerShell Pro Tools first. That was kind of like a, a freemium model of one of the open source projects that I had been doing for a long time. So I decided that it was really popular and that I needed to kind of monetize it. So you launched a freemium version in 2017 of that, of that tool? Yeah, yep. How did you get the first hundred like freemium downloads? Uh, well, actually, the open source project that I had running, it was PowerShell Tools for Visual Studio. So Visual Studio is Microsoft's development environment. I added, I added the PowerShell language support to that. And uh, prior to me actually making it into a freemium tool, it was a, a free tool. And that had, 
I think at its peak about 750,000 installs. So I realized that that was like, a, I probably should like try to sell something in there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's what I did is I, I added some features that, uh, you know, people could buy. Um, so it was more or less like that, the, that install base just, it automatically updates and then they kind of saw my new features that they could purchase. And then from there, I kind of set up a website and people could buy, buy a license. Adam, but so Adam, let's go back though. So before you launch yeah. the paid features and people see the paid pop-up, I get that. And there's a conversion rate from free install oh, yeah. to paid. I get that. But take me back to the beginning though. Like how, where were you actually? So I understand you built, you said you built this for Visual Basic? Uh, Visual Studio. Yep. Visual Studio. But how yep. did you get 750,000 downloads? It's not easy. Were you like ranked really high okay. in like the app store or, or on a, a subreddit forum somewhere or Substack or how'd you get the downloads? Uh, so... It was uh, internally, uh, I was working at you know, a large like Fortune 100 software company kind of thing. And I built it in my free time. And then we had some guys there that had some, I don't know, uh, uh, friends at Microsoft sort of thing. Um, so when they saw that I built that open source tool, they got a hold of these guys at Microsoft. And then eventually Microsoft promoted it. Like uh, it was, you know, on their website and... Um, it eventually was in the installer for a little while. That kind of thing. You could actually select a feature and install my product. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's how it got cool. so many installs. Yeah. Okay. So that makes sense. All right. So you launched some new paid features. Now, when did you launch that paid, that paywall for the first time? Uh, that was like September, 2017. Okay. Got it. September, 2017. And so walk me through, you're an engineer. So I always like asking engineers how you think about pricing. Yeah. Cause it's like toxic to you. So yeah. how did you think about what price point to put on the new features? Oh man, I was like way low, you know, I was like, ah, <laughs> oh, people, you know, I'll, I have 750, I did like the math. I was like, I have 750,000 installs or whatever, right? I'm going to charge 25 bucks a year for, you know, this paid feature kind of thing. And, um, from there it was kind of like, oh yeah. Oh, okay. Easy millionaire <laughs> sort of thing. But, uh, you know, like 99.9% .9 of the people didn't buy even at that price point. And how, as it how many of, did buy? Uh, I think my first, like my first year I did probably $15,000 of the sales. So okay. it was, it was okay. Um, yeah, so was that like six, 600, 700 people purchased something like that? Yeah. Something like that. So, uh, I think by the end of 2018, I had at least doubled or tripled the price that I was charging kind of thing. So, um, yeah. So, uh, that continues to be a pretty, pretty good seller for me actually it's probably about 40 percent of my business still oh wow interesting okay that's great and that yeah. is the sort of one time or actually no it's you know the annual 25 dollars per year sort of upsell yeah so that's actually a hundred dollars per year so actually I've, I've increased it a little bit because i've added a lot more features and that kind of thing but um yeah it's uh it's still doing pretty well that's no that's that's fantastic so is it just yeah. you i mean is it just you on the team you're the one doing all the updates uh, yep. Uh, for that product, I am. I do have a, a contractor in Israel that's helping me on the uh, partial universal side of things, doing some of the front end development about 20, 20 hours a week sort of thing. Okay. So, um, but mostly it's just me. And how many people are now paying for that? Do you, and what's the new install base, including free? Uh, so let's see. PowerShell Pro Tools install base is it's hovering around. Uh, 400,000 for the install base of free. Um, I'd say I'm selling about a thousand licenses a year kind of thing right now. So, yep. uh, that's doing pretty well. And then, um, for PowerShell universal, the install base is a lot smaller. I, I think we have probably, uh, you know, like 500, uh, installs, uh, that are paid sort of thing. Yep. Um, and then, uh, from there, you know, we have some free features that you can use without it. So it's about 60,000 actually, um, free, free installs of PowerShell Universal. So, yep, yep, yep. Uh, interesting. And uh, so you're adding in terms of growth on PowerShell Pro a thousand new licenses per year. But I imagine, I mean, you started selling this back in 2018. So you should have people like paying for multiple years at this point. Like if you just take a snapshot of like today, how many paid accounts do you have? Uh, Honestly, I don't have that number on hand kind of thing, but That's okay. I would say uh, my, my churn rate's a little high for that because it's very much a one-off tool. I've found that people will like purchase it, use it for like the specific thing they want to do and then not renew kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's not, um, 
the longevity isn't quite there with that product, and that's one of the reasons I started using PowerShell Universal. But I would say I probably have um, you know fifteen hundred paying customers per year, kind of thing. So I see, I see. Okay, yeah. got it. So that part of the business sort of does like one hundred fifty grand a year, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got it. And that's forty percent to your business. So altogether, these other products you've launched, you call it say three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar a year sort of business. Mm-hmm. So your instant millionaire is happening. It's just it's a couple years later. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's taken a while. So yeah. Um, but it, it's getting to the point where, uh, it's, I'm comfortable enough where now I can kind of start to grow the business. It's been, it's been fun being a solar entrepreneur and doing all the things, but I'm, I'm looking forward to kind of like, uh, taking some of that cash and reinvesting it and hiring some people kind of thing. So what is the next hire or who is the next hire? Uh, that's a really good question. I think I need some help on the business side sort of thing. I'm very bad at pricing. I'm very bad at marketing. I'm very bad at like that kind of thing. I could use, uh, use some help there. I'm a very much tech savvy guy. I like building the software. I like doing that kind of thing. So I'm going to start looking um, into either marketing and kind of the business side, or I need some help with support. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of where I'm looking. And have you bootstrapped the company or raised? Uh, Bootstrap. Love that. That's great. And the team today is just two of you guys, right? Uh, Yeah. One and a half, I'd say. Yeah. One and a half. No, no, No sales, no marketing, no nothing yet, right? Yeah. I love that. Okay. And, and talk to me, you you mentioned annual churn is pretty high. What, what is it? I honestly couldn't give you a good number, but I would, I would bet that on the PowerShell pro tools side, I would say it's probably like 25% churn annually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but on the universal dashboard and PowerShell universal side, it's probably more around 10% kind of thing. So they're still pretty high, but Um, one of the things is that both of the licenses are perpetual licensed right now. So it's not like a subscription based or anything like that. So if people decide not to upgrade or pay for maintenance, then they don't have to continue to pay me sort of thing. So if they're they're happy, happy with the, you know, the version they have, that kind of thing, then there's no need to upgrade. So they could technically still be using my software. It's just, they're not paying for a license. So I would still count that. But they paid once like three years ago, a hundred bucks. Exactly. I see. I see. Interesting. Okay. Any paid marketing spend? Like, do you have CAC for these new customers, or it's all organic? Uh, it's. I'd say it's ninety nine percent organic. I've probably spent like a thousand dollars on some paid marketing here and there, but it really hasn't panned out. I, I realize I probably need to spend a lot more to actually see that. But well, what? Yeah. So what is? The, the, I mean, how are people finding you today? Because it's it's not via like your website and SEO. There's not a lot of traffic going there. So I'm assuming you're built into some app exchanges or something. Yeah, so there's the Visual Studio Marketplace, which is one big uh, place that people are finding me. And then there's this PowerShell gallery where people can like download PowerShell extensions, that kind of or modules, and uh, they'll find me through that. Oh, um, PowerShell is not your thing. That's another tool that you sort of built on top of. Yeah, so PowerShell is a scripting and shell language by Microsoft. So they Got actually, it. yeah, there's a whole ecosystem there around that. And you know, I have. You know, I have an MVP, a Microsoft MVP in the PowerShell space. So I kind of have like a voice inside that, I guess, domain. Um, so that's kind of the other way I do yeah. that. So. When Microsoft hosts a PowerShell user conference, you're like a freaking celebrity. Exactly. It's like the only time I like <laughs> I'm walking around and people are like, it's Adam Driscoll, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's hysterical. I love that. You know what they, they they say in my side of the world, sales and marketing. They say there's riches in the niches. So you know, you're it's it's not bad to be hyper focused like that and super popular in a hyper focused yeah. spot. Uh, very cool. Okay, got it. So bootstrap company, two folks looking to sort of scale today, mainly organic. You're getting it through the Visual Studio sort of exchange and the PowerShell galleries. Um, very cool. Let's uh, let's wrap up here with the famous five, Adam. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I like the four hour work week. I don't know if you count that as a business book necessarily, but I kind of like some of the concepts in there sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, it just got me thinking a little bit differently about my business. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Um, I am reading Satya Nadal's book right now, actually. Um, I I am really fond of him just seeing the way he transformed Microsoft. So I really like that. Number three, I usually ask what's your favorite online tool for building your company, but I want to change because I'm seeing the awards hanging behind you on your clothes rack, which I believe are uh, Iron Man awards. So my question for you is actually a little bit different. If, if today you're running an Iron Man in like three hours, what are you putting in your body three hours prior to an Iron Man? What are you eating? Uh, let's see. I'm drinking a lot of water and every morning before like an Iron Man, I eat a donut. Re- okay. So that you don't have like some like nootropic weird herb. 
no, weird no. concoction you blend together. It's just a donut, Dunkin' Donuts donut. What kind of right. donut? Fully glazed sprinkles or no? Uh, glazed, no sprinkles. <laughs> 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 All right, number four. How many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, I'd say seven on average. And what's your situation? Married, single kids? Uh, married. Any no kiddos? Kids. No kids, nope. okay. This is a dog. How, how old are you? Uh, 34. 34. Last question. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Ooh, don't give everything away for free. <laughs> Guys, there you have it. Iron Man software playing in a Microsoft scripting, scripting language called PowerShell. He built this inside of a Fortune 100 company, but now has and does between $300,000 and $400,000 a year in revenue, selling a combination of one-time or actual perpetual licenses plus a maintenance contract, but really trying to work towards this more sort of subscription recurring revenue. He's got about 1,500 companies today paying sort of 20 to 30 bucks per uh, per month, which is 300 400 per year per server install, essentially. So he does have sort of a way to scale this. We'll see what happens next he's doing it all bootstrapped has full flexibility just a team of two adam thanks for taking us to the top yeah thanks again nate one more thing before you go we have a brand new show every thursday at 1 p.m central it's called shark tank for SaaS. we call it deal or bust one founder comes on three hungry buyers they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards their expenses their revenue ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right, I'll be in the comments. See ya.